Hey guys, this is Jake from State Fun. Today we're gonna see if the E85 conversion I did is actually economical in my particular case. So if you don't remember, what I did in one of the previous videos, linked in the description below, is I added an ethanol sensor and tuned my vehicle to allow for flex fuel. So what the flex fuel conversion does for me is it allows me to utilize an ethanol fuel from anywhere from 0% to 100%. Now, standard gasoline from the pump comes out at about 10%. E85 comes out anywhere from 51% to 83% of the pump. So utilizing the sensor that I installed, I can dictate to the computer how much fuel it needs to use. Now E85 does use more fuel, but it makes more power. And in my area, it's cheaper. Uh, when we went to the pump earlier, it was 65 cents a gallon cheaper. That's, I think that was like 17% cheaper in my case. Uh, I did see a comment on my last video where there's a guy in Washington state and his vehicle, he likes to run E85 in it, but it's more expensive than 92. So in that case, it wouldn't be economical because you're using more fuel and it's more expensive. But we're gonna find out today whether my Suburban is able to make use of the E85 to become more economical to drive between the cost of the fuel and the actual usage of the fuel. So uh, I know we're gonna be taking a trip that I have typically gotten about 13 miles to the gallon on. And I know that's a very low number for y'all, but this is an old Suburban and it's big and heavy. And we're gonna see what it gets this time. Do some calculations and find out once and for all whether it's economical for me in my scenario and whether you might want to try it. Let's see what happens. Y'all think that's how you do it? Oh, he brought me cheese. Let's get on the road. Unlock converter. 
So I'm happy so far, specifically with power increase. We'll see what happens with the uh, fuel mileage. with how the ethanol performed so whether it's economical or not I'm probably still gonna use it in this vehicle because it doesn't get good gas mileage anyways and the additional power for uh, for drivability was very nice especially in the uh, mountain clock we're about to get to the gas station I'm gonna pull up to the exact same station that I filled up with before and perform the same filling routine that I did before so that should uh, make sure that I'm filling it to the same point that it was at when we started. Then we'll uh, we'll pull out a whiteboard and we'll do some calculations. to do some math and I'll go ahead and let you know I have done a little bit of math already and it's extremely surprising the uh, well the results you're about to see them here so let's just go ahead and say let's put our what it was before so on regular gasoline I was getting about 13 miles per gallon now that is been consistent for pretty much every tank that I've put in this where I've checked it. It's been anywhere from 12 and a half to 13 and a half. So average it down, 13 miles to the gallon. So let's go with E85. Now what we know is when I filled the tank originally, before I did the run, I filled it until the pump clicked off and then I ran it one more time until it clicked off a second time and then rounded to the nearest dollar. I like even dollar amounts, that's just me. So when I came back after the trip to and from the mountains, I made sure that I followed that exact same process at the exact same pump to try and make sure that it was as even as it could possibly be. And we actually got the same number of gallons per time. So I'm guessing I had burned the same amount either way. What we had was 31.1 gallons of gas, gallons of ethanol, E85. Now, my odometer, my trip odometer, doesn't work. My standard one does. So I have to take readings when I do this. I have to write down my mileage when I get gas at the beginning, write down my mileage at the end and do a little bit of subtra subtraction. So beginning mileage, 273. Now that's just the last three numbers of my mileage. It was like, I think it's 280 some thousand, 273. Ending mileage was, let me double check this to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it was 688. Yep, 688. So the trip was 68, 688 minus 273, which comes out to be 415, 415 miles. And we burned 31.1 gallons of gas. 415, 31.1, 13.34. How in the heck did I get better gas mileage, or at least about the same gas mileage, with E85 as I did with regular gasoline? That's a good question. The only thing that I can come up with is because 
I am burning more fuel, I'm making more power. Those spots that I was talking about in the travel where I'm 40 to 45 mile an hour and I hit a slight incline where it was having to gear down and run higher RPMs to get me up the hill, it didn't have to do that. Also, going up the mountain, I didn't have to gear down and run super high RPMs going up the hill. So the extra power kind of gave me that lower RPM power up inclines. And I believe that's where it made up, on the mountain climb for the most part, because yes, I may be using about 30% more fuel per stroke or per rotation, but if I'm at 2000 RPM instead of 3000 RPM, I mean, that's a large difference. That's 33%, is that right? 33% higher RPMs with gasoline. So it would wash out, right? 30%, 33%, they're pretty close. That's the only explanation I can come up with. If you've got an idea, go ahead and drop that down in the comments below. If you're surprised by that number like I am, make sure to hit the like button, cause it's crazy. And I'm extremely happy about this. And I will be making more runs to back this up. I may not necessarily film them, but I am very impressed by that number and I wanna make sure that it is right. Man, that's crazy. Well, that's really impressive. I'm still shocked. I'm gonna have to double check my math. But while I'm double checking math, how about y'all go watch the uh, installation video for my ethanol sensor and stuff link down in the description below. So thanks for watching. Y'all have a good one.